one person at a time. Well, right now we're going to be talking about another tragedy, travesty, if you will. Dr. Doug Rocky is going to join us. Those of you who have heard him in the past, well, uh, you will want to hear him on Tuesday because he will be a guest on Tuesday for a longer period of time. Right now we have an issue that's come up that needs your attention and needs our attention. Uh, Dr. Doug Rocky, who has been the prime whistleblower of the depleted uranium, uranium truth movement, uh, joins us now. And I uh, appreciate very much what he is doing one day at a time, one person at a time to try and wake up this country. Because Dr. Rocky... I, I have to tell you, I have so much respect for the abuse that you have taken from people who want to put you down, and yet you just won't fold. Thank you so much, and thank you for joining us in the Power Hour today. Thank you, Joyce. On Tuesday in Urbana, Illinois, a town hall meeting was held with the United States Senator Durbin, Assistant mm-hmm. Secretary of Defense Tammy Duckworth, and uh, U.S. You know, Illinois State Treasurer and U.S. Senate candidate Alex Giannoulis. During this meeting on Tuesday, this last Tuesday, Tammy Duckworth told a veteran of the 509th Airborne Regiment, you know, the, I mean the legendary airborne guys, that the reason he could not get prompt and optical medical care at the Danville, Illinois VA Medical Center is because although he is service-connected, his injuries occurred in training at Fort Polk, Louisiana, and not in combat. Okay, explain this man's injuries. How did he appear to how did he appear there? He's in a wheelchair. The man is in a wheelchair. He was brought in a wheelchair in the meeting. He sat in a wheelchair, strapped in the wheelchair throughout the meeting, up in the front. I mean, the whole report is in the Wednesday, September eighth issue of the Champaign, Illinois News Gazette. It shows uh, Jason in his wheelchair right next to Senator Durbin and, and everything, all of us in the picture. It's astonishing. And then yesterday, I get the New Army Times in the mail. Now, Wait, you before under- you move on, do we know how he was injured? Do we know he how was significant? A, peri- a, par- a parachute accident. Parachute, parachute accident. accident. Is he paralyzed? Uh, no, but he's got all kinds of problems where he can't walk, obviously. Okay, so he is seriously injured, though, as he's a result seri- of it. Absolutely seriously injured as a result of a parachute accident, training accident at Fort Polk, Louisiana. Okay, so okay. he is asking why he cannot get treatment. Tammy Duckworth, who is Assistant uh, Veterans Affairs Director, says because you're not a high enough priority. Exactly. And so he's trying to seek medical care at the Danville, Illinois, VA Medical Center. Well, I mean, he's not the only one. Yesterday morning, before I even got out of bed, I got a call from a local U.S. Marine officer, and once a Marine, always a Marine, with spinal injuries, and he said the same thing. I mean, the same thing. I wasn't even out of bed yesterday. Day after day, it's the same thing. Denied and delayed and ineffective medical care. Well, now, not to challenge you or to say you're wrong, but obviously you haven't seen all these wonderful, very expensive VA commercials on TV that say we give the very best care to those who have returned because they fought for our country and we're standing up for them. Obviously, you haven't seen that good PR production that's being done that says that this is not happening. Yeah, you know, obviously, you know, but I guess our first-hand personal experience is quite different. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it really is, isn't it? Yeah. Now, when then, you – okay, the, go ahead. But then yesterday, I opened my mail, and I get the new Army Times. And on page 14 of the September 6th issue of Army Times, the first story is another VA found to have high error rates. Okay, they're talking about 21% error rates in the Detroit Regional Office for the VA processing claims. Just wonderful. So we have incredible administrative errors. We have delayed, denied, and ineffective medical care because of budgetary limitations. I have a warrior in a wheelchair from a training accident who can't get medical care at the Danville VA Medical Center, and it's all because of budgetary limitations. Then the next story is the Department of Veteran Affairs is sponsoring for $430,000 Landon Cassell in the NASCAR race tomorrow. Wait a minute. September 11th at Richmond, Virginia. Wait a minute. The NASCAR race, the Department of Veterans Affairs, the Department of Veterans Affairs is supporting the NASCAR? For $430,000 for uh, car number 71 driven by Landon Cassell, which will be run in the Air Guard 400 at Richmond International Raceway on tomorrow. 
So we have four hundred thirty thousand oh, dollars going to a gosh. NASCAR car while veterans in wheelchairs and veterans who in trouble cannot get the medical care that is owed to them by the United States government, the Department of Veteran Affairs. Talk about a waste. I mean, I am upset. Oh. I am totally, completely upset. Yeah, we have no money. We have no money. You're low priority. We can't take care of you. Too bad you're in a wheelchair. So sad. And, you know, we take these guys over there, injure them in all manner of different um, ways, uh, whether it be a training accident or whether it be in, in active combat, bring them back here and say, well, hey, that's your luck, your SOL. And so these people are suffering now in an incredible way, and they can, they can fund the Department of Veterans Affairs. I mean, I could see maybe that maybe the Army you're recruiting might do that, or Air Force recruiting or something like that. But the Department of Veterans Affairs are supposed to be involved in Veterans Affairs. Not in race cars. Four hundred thirty thousand dollars. You know how far four hundred thirty thousand dollars to go to treat Jason Wheeler, Ill Bill Butcher here at the Dan Bill VA Medical Center. Wow. It'd be it'd be wonderful. So what I need and what I'm asking today, as a as a veteran, as a disabled veteran, as a warrior, as a veterans advocate, I am asking everybody in this nation, everybody that's listening to this program. Every mother and father, son and daughter, brother, sister, niece and nephew, that even though they don't know Jason and Bill, that they call the Danville VA Medical Center today. They call and talk to and demand that the director, Michael Hamilton, explain why they can spend $430,000 instead That's of right. taking care of these individuals. But more important, I want, I want asking, I'm appealing, I'm asking everybody in this nation, to call the Danville VA Medical Center and ask them or demand.